Ladies and gentlemen, hit subscribe to this channel right now. You'll hear congressional testimony from Michael Cohen in a couple of seconds. You'll hear former and future President Donald Trump. He's already won the Oval Office in 24, ladies and gentlemen. Could be a potential landslide. Biden's America, the economy, foreign policy is an unmitigated disaster. I always look at a president in terms of foreign policy. Trump's foreign policy was infinitely better than President Obama's, than Bush's, than Biden's. This is not even up for debate. The world is, is crumbling at this moment because there's zero vision, zero emphasis on peace, zero emphasis on what we want to achieve in terms of foreign policy. Trump, Doha agreement, brought Americans home that Biden reluctantly abided by. And in a couple of seconds, you'll hear congressional testimony, but really quickly, Trump morally, if you care about moral issues, people were not losing their lives and experience, experiencing such atrocities trying to enter the country under Trump. That's a fact that you can't even really talk about on this platform. And you have people, you have, you have all people of all ages unaccompanied Coming into this country, Democrats and liberal Democrats and progressives and AOC do not care. You see an economy where there's more poverty, not less. There's greater poverty. We had less poverty under Trump. The poverty rate has increased under Biden. We had record low poverty under Trump, record highs in household median income. But let's listen to, they're going to try to say he's a convicted felon. It'll be overturned on appeal. They'll likely convict him, but it will be overturned on appeal because the chief witness, the key witness for the prosecution, Politico, judge says Michael Cohen may have committed perjury, denies early probation, end. March 20th, 2024, a federal judge suggested Wednesday that Michael Cohen committed perjury under oath, giving fresh support to pre uh, former President Trump's claims that his one-time lawyer. Okay, so we'll get to that. You can actually hear the congressional testimony right this second. Hit subscribe right now to read my writing in The Hill, The Huffington Post Salon, The Jerusalem Post, The Federalist, and other publications. Go to hagoodman.com. Trump will win. I told you that Clinton, that Trump would win and defeat Clinton in 2016. I said there would be a unanimous Supreme Court decision defending Trump, overturning the Colorado ban. That happened. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, that... Michael Cohen is actually helping Trump get a, get become the next president. Thank God. Democrats are so obsessed with Trump that they're ignoring legitimate concerns about a terrible economy and an atrocious foreign policy. Hit subscribe. Let's listen to this. Jim Jordan, Michael Cohen. This is in 2018, ladies and gentlemen. And in your sentencing statement, back in December in front of the judge, you said this, Mr. Cohen, my weakness can be characterized as a blind loyalty to Donald Trump, a blind loyalty that led me to choose a path of darkness. Is that accurate, Mr. Cohen? I wrote that. By the way, who speaks like this? Unless you were repeating the words of a Democratic Party strategist or operative or lawyer. Who speaks like this? I, I, I went on a path of darkness. He was Trump's lawyer, opened up an account, a business account, his own business, paid with his own money, a, a non-disclosure agreement, and then he's testified under oath that he would do things on his own, independent of Trump knowing. <laughs> and he was suing BuzzFeed and uh, possibly others for the absurd hoax that he was a part of, that they accused him of, which, by the way, he was innocent of. He's mentioned Michael Cohen in the Steele dossier, which the DNC and Clinton's campaign paid a fine, broke FEC laws for purchasing with campaign donations, but Trump did not break any FEC laws, which is another reason why this will all be overturned. But they just desperately want to say, convicted felon Trump, and still his poll numbers will go up. Let's continue. You wrote that and said that in front of the judge. Is that right? That's correct. Let me read a few other things here, and let me ask you why you did some of these things. When you filed a false tax return in 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, and 2016, was all that out of blind loyalty to the president? 
No, it was not. When you failed to report four million in income to the Internal Revenue Service, did you do that to protect Donald Trump? No, I did not. And when you failed to pay 1.4 million in taxes, I got constituents who don't make that in a lifetime. When you failed to pay 1.4 million in taxes to the U.S. Treasury, was that out of some blind loyalty to the President of the United States? It was not, but the number was 1.38 and change, and I have paid that money back to the IRS I think at this the, time. I think the American people will appreciate that 1.38. And I would also just like to say it was over a course of five years, approximately 260000 a year. Yeah, and that's what I said, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2000, that's five years. Yes. Got it. When you made false statements to financial institutions concerning a home equity line of credit, taxi medallions, and your Park Avenue apartment in 2013, 2014, and 2015, and you pled guilty to making those false statements to those banks, was that all done to protect the president? No, it was not. How about this one? When you created the fake Twitter account, Women for Cohen, and paid a firm to post tweets like this one, in a world of lies, deception, and fraud, we appreciate this honest guy at Michael Cohen, hashtag TGIF, hashtag handsome, hashtag sexy. Was that done to protect the president? Yeah, Mr. Jordan, I didn't actually set that up. It was done by a young lady that worked for Red Finch. And during the course of the campaign, which you would know gets somewhat crazy and wild, we were having fun. That's what it was, sir. We were having fun. Was it done to protect the president? That was not done to protect the president. Was it a fake Twitter account? That was, no, that was a real Twitter account. It exists. You pay a firm to create this I didn't pay the firm to do Cohen. that. It was done by a young lady that works for the firm. And again, sir, we were having fun during a stressful time. Notice how Democrats have now, since he turned, They've adopted him as their own. Oh, my God. Anyone who turns on Trump. Like, this is the thing. I don't really care about. I, I look at Biden. And I say, I hope he's OK. God bless him. He can't, the poor man can't remember things. He can't even be indicted because of cognitive issues. I feel sorry for that human being. Most Americans do. I don't have any like I don't have to um, obsess over. Like even Hunter's laptop, we know there's bribery and graft on there. It There's law-breaking, rampant criminality. The New York Post published emails where they're asking for influence. But again, it's not like the way that Democrats work is they're obsessed. I'm not obsessed with Hunter or his laptop. It just is what it is. Or the fact that Biden committed classified data crimes in his garage. It is what it is. Biden, objectively, in terms of the economy and foreign policy, is not a good president. Infinitely worse than Trump. It, that's it. But there's something extra, like there's some additional manifestation or psychological or emotional issues that Democrats have. They now look at Michael Cohen as some kind of heroic individual. And he probably relishes all of this because now he's turned on Trump. Anyone who worked for Trump or turns on Trump has utility for Democrats because that's all they do. They obsess over Trump. They don't care about the economy or foreign policy. It's it's their team. That's it. Their team. Adam, thank you to my super chat. Thank you. But it's so interesting. Let's continue. It's so interesting how there's this confidence, this smug arrogance where because he turned now you have you, you have liberal and progressive youtubers defending michael cohen months after he was going to sue buzzfeed and defeat he was defending trump so all you have to do to be virtuous in this orwellian political scene is turn on trump suddenly you're a good person even though Michael Cohen very likely committed perjury and is probably the worst witness you could ever have to ensure that a conviction won't be overturned on appeal, which it will be, because there's no way misdemeanors 
suddenly can be elevated to a felony for tr- felonies for Trump in a blatantly partisan charade called this hush money trial. But let's continue. The point is, Mr. Cohen, did you lie to protect the president or did you lie to help yourself? I'm not sure how that helped me, sir. I'm not sure how it did either. Right. And the I would like is, to I also think... note that more than half the people and, and on that site point. are men. Here's the point. <laughs> Chairman just gave you a 30-minute opening statement. And you have a history of lying over and over and over again. And frankly, don't take my word for it. Take what the court said. Take what the Southern District of New York said. Cohen did crimes that were marked by a pattern of deception and that permeated his professional life. These crimes were distinct in their harms, but bear a common set of circumstances. They each involved deception and were each each motivated by personal greed and ambition. A pattern of deception for personal greed and ambition. And you just got 30 minutes of an opening statement where you trashed the president of the United States of America. Mr. Cohen, how long did, how long did you work for Donald Trump? Approximately a decade. 10 years? That's correct. And you said all these bad things about the president there in that last 30 minutes, and yet you worked for him for 10 years? All those bad things, I mean, if it's that bad, I can see you working for him for 10 days, maybe 10 weeks, maybe even 10 months. But you worked for him for 10 years. Mr. Cohen, how, how, long, did you, uh, how long did you work in the White House? I never worked in the White House. And that's the point, isn't it, Mr. Cohen? No, sir. Yes, it is. No, it's not, sir. You wanted to work in the White House. No, you sir. You didn't get brought to the dance. Sir. And now? I was extremely proud to be personal attorney. So there could be evidence, there likely is evidence, there, it's been reported that there's evidence that he really wanted to work with Trump in the over, is, within his administration in some capacity, an advisor of some capacity. So that's another lie. So the hush money trial is going to start Monday. They're going to likely convict Trump because it's New York and it's run, you know, Tammany Hall, New York. Democrats blatantly, they don't realize when they go after Trump, there's a rabid base of morally superior liberal Democrats who are so who are salivating, they're so happy. They're always, oh, he's, he's petrified. He, nobody has more courage than Trump pertaining to battling or going up against a political um, confrontation, especially against Democrats who don't know Everything they do makes Trump more powerful, more popular. Everything Democrats do to disparage, demean, to try to ruin Trump makes him stronger and more powerful. But then again, you're talking about people who are too stupid to realize what's going on. So because they obsess over Trump, they're just going to make him more. His poll numbers will go up if or when he gets convicted. There's a chance he doesn't, by the way. That could be one person, two people, enough people who have enough courage to say, yeah, this is absurd. And also the key witness lies all the time. To the president of the United States of America, I did not want to go to the White House. I was offered jobs. I can tell you a story of Mr. Trump reaming out Reince Priebus because I had not taken a job where Mr. Trump wanted me to, which is working with Don McGahn at the White House General Counsel's Mr. Cohen, office. Mr. you work for the sir, president. Sir, one, one second. All right. What I said at the time, and I brought a lawyer in who produced a memo as to why I should not go in because there would be no attorney-client privilege, and in order to handle... He's... <laughs> He doesn't care about attorney-client privilege. He's been he's been divulging as much he, as much information as he can about Trump. <laughs> this is hilarious. Some of the matters that I talked about in my opening, that it would be best suited for me not to go in, and that every president had a personal Cohen, here's attorney. Here's what I see. Here's what I see. I see a guy work for ten years and is here trashing the guy he worked for for ten years. He worked with Trump for 10 years. If he didn't get caught with taxi medallion, financial issues, financial crimes, tax tax crimes, he wouldn't have turned on Trump. They got him to turn on Trump because he got a lesser sentence. They They took care of him essentially in terms of the sentencing. Not so with others. 
okay? Um, you could look at that man who saved a subway, people on the subway from, uh, you know, an individual who was going to do them harm. I don't think that, that the uh, New York prosecutors are going to give that man the same favorable treatment as they gave Michael Cohen, okay, if indeed he gets convicted. Hopefully he doesn't. But the point is, I mean, you look at what's taking place in this country, it's unbelievable. This this type of mob mentality, The when you have, it's just unbelievable. This is Biden's America, ladies and gentlemen. In addition to inflation, high interest rates, and a global catastrophe that's never ending, you have a change in, I mean, I, I can go into a whole bunch of different topics, but let's continue. Didn't get a job in the White House, and now, and now you're you're behaving just like everyone else who's got fired or didn't get the job they wanted, like Andy McCabe, like James Comey. Same kind of selfish motivation after you don't get the thing you want. That's what I see here today, and I think that's what the American people. Mr. Jordan, all I wanted was what I got to be personal attorney to the president to enjoy the senior year of my son in high school and waiting for my daughter who's graduating from college to come back to New York. I got exactly what I want. Gentlemen, exactly what you want? What I wanted. Prison That's right. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I received time. exactly right. what I wanted. Gentlemen, time has expired. Ms. Washington Schultz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Witness, you got? Next up, with the permission of the chairman, I get to ask Mr. Cohen about his perspective on the president's business dealings. Let me get this straight. The, the witness lied to multiple financial institutions to get loans to pay off other loans just to keep himself afloat, and he's going to be the expert on business practices. Obviously, Mr. Chairman, the witness may produce documents that he suggests incriminates the president, yet he lies to banks all of those lies were done on fraudulent documents. Documents that he forged. Nothing he says or produces has any credibility. Apparently, he even lied about delivering his own child, which his wife had to correct the record. Ladies and gentlemen, how on earth is this witness credible? With all the lies and deception, the self-serving fraud, it begs the question, what is the majority party doing here? No one can see this guy as credible. He will say whatever he wants to accomplish his own personal goals. He's a fake witness, and his presence here is a travesty. I hope the American people see through this. I know the people back in Tennessee will. And with that statement, sir, I have a few questions of the witness. With your loss of your law license, I think you mentioned in your opening statement that you had been disbarred. What is your source of income in the future? I don't expect I'm going to have a source of income when I'm in federal penitentiary. What, uh, is there a book deal coming or anything like that? I have no book deal right now in the process. I have been contacted by many, including for television, the movie. If you want to tell me who you would like to play you, I'm more than happy to write <laughs> the name down. I'm sure there's a I will a also like to man. turn around and just to correct your statement on me. No well, let me ask one other question, though. I, I only have a limited amount of time. No individual. One quick, one quick question. Who paid your expenses to be here today? Who's paid my expenses? To be here today. I paid my expenses. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to yield the remaining of my time to uh, the, the ranking member. Mr. Cohen, how many times did you talk to the special counsel's office? Seven. How, did they talk to you at all in preparation for today's hearing between the seven times you talked to him prior to your sentencing. Uh, have you had any conversations with the special counsel's office between sentencing and today? I'm sorry, sir. I don't understand your question. You talked to him seven times. That's in the sentencing uh, uh, memorandums that were in front of the court back in December. What I'm asking is have, how many times have you talked to the special counsel's office since then uh, up to today's appearance here in Congress? The gentleman time has expired. You may answer the question now. That one question. I'm sorry. I don't have the answer to that. Mr. Maloney. Wasn't well. I'll come back. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is the key witness, the virtuous key witness. And by the way, Rob, thank you so very much. And Adam and Christian, thank you so very much. 
Uh, greatly, greatly appreciated, ladies and gentlemen. So this is the key witness that's going to imprison Trump. You understand Trump? They want to send Trump to prison for a record-keeping violation. Meanwhile, the special counsel recently said categorically that Biden did commit crimes, but no reasonable jury or prosecutor, just like no reasonable prosecutor with Clinton, even though laws were broken, uh, you know what? Democrats can't imagine a, a, a court that would indict or imprison Biden or Clinton. But with Trump, record keeping, yes. And they're going after him. He was a president with the power to declassify. We can go, we can go on forever. The reason you hit subscribe, hopefully, to this channel is that there's not anything, there's nothing that I can see from media or Democrats that I don't have a rebuttal for, a logical, rational rebuttal for. Nothing. That's why, like, I never debate anyone that I know who perhaps doesn't like Trump. They get enraged whenever I, in a rational, cool, calm, deliberate, educated manner, completely dismantle, eviscerate their argument. Oh, my God. It's like they turn into uh, the Lord of the Rings creature. Precious. And so, and that's why, look, do not ever debate anyone, cousin, family member, wife, husband, you know, son, daughter, co-worker, just do not talk politics. I'm telling you, do not talk politics with anyone. Nicholas, thank you. Nicholas in Australia, thank you so very much to my viewers around the world in Australia and around the world, UK, New Zealand, Canada, Philippines, Korea, everywhere around the world, Nigeria, don't talk politics. Ameri don't talk politics, at least about Trump. Well, at least if you're in the U.S., okay? I can only tell you, if in, in the U.S., if you're American like myself, don't talk politics. It, it, nothing, it doesn't work out well because if you get somebody that, that doesn't like Trump, it's like, the, it's like the end of the world. But here, this is Michael Cohen's attorney, once a lawyer at one point, going to bat for Trump and Michael Cohen when Michael Cohen was on Trump's side. Or, or the, uh, the, the White House. I mean, does any attorney ever well, pay $130,000 well, out of their own pocket? First of all, we keep labeling it as hush money. It's pursuant to a non-disclosure agreement. These non-disclosure agreements are entered into every single day in, in America. It's, they're entered into by politicians. But it's money to remain CEOs. silent. So, but they, but it's it's money to not disclose the substance of the case. Okay. And and so, one hundred thirty thousand dollars was paid. It was pursuant to a contract. But to answer your question, um, is is that normal course of business for an attorney to pay it? No. But there's nothing illegal about it. And it, given the context of this relationship, there's certainly nothing unethical about it. Michael Cohen also was on record as saying he would do things without Trump's knowledge. Now, it's obvious that I think, pres I think I, it's obvious President Trump wanted this type of non-disclosure to take place. It was completely legal, but of course he wanted that to take place. Regardless, it was just like this lawyer is saying, completely legal. They're trying to get Trump on a record keeping misdemeanor. It's a misdemeanor, it's not a felony. They elevated it to a felony because they said the FEC laws were broken, but the FEC fined Clinton and the DNC. They didn't find Trump. The FEC fined Clinton and the DNC for the Steele dossier. They did not find Trump. And remember, Michael Cohen was representing EC LLC. It was EC LLC that entered into this contract. Donald Trump was a third party beneficiary. Does that make sense to you? Uh, it, it, it doesn't. Donald Trump was not a third party beneficiary. There was a company that Michael Cohen created. Thank you, Rob. Greatly appreciated. Thank you. I hope so as well. Thank you, Rob. Nicholas, thank you so much. Very kind of you, Rob. Thank you. Nicholas, thank you so very much. Um, it was a company that Michael Cohen started on his own. Okay? It, he started the company on his own. 
End of story. You're not going to get Trump uh, imprisoned because someone else started the company on their own. Trump had nothing to do with this. Why have a he law has everything dumb- to do with it? He was a third party beneficiary. You're just not acknowledging that fact that he's a third party beneficiary to this contract. He doesn't have to be a party to the contract to benefit from the contract, but he certainly can enforce the contract like a third party beneficiary can. And this is a contract. And you are advising your client to blatantly violate a contract. So this is not long ago, this man's attorney. (laughs) It's a contract that was signed. When you go to, let's say, when you do business with anyone, you you, you sign generally an NDA if there's proprietary knowledge, if there's, um, you know, some kind of patent. If you're working at some, you're working, you're getting something uh, uh, manufactured. Okay, so it's like, it's unbelievable. We're also um, referring I'm no, going to ask a question no pertaining to your summer home yes. that you purchased. Too. I never purchased a summer home. No individual or no bank in the 22 years that I've had loans have ever lost a dollar with me. I- so then why did Trump get a $5 trillion uh, fine? That's exactly the defense and the correct defense for Trump. He never lost anyone money. Why was he convicted of fraud? And that too will be overturned. It was already watered down and he got the money. It's like, again, this hush money trial, he will win on appeal and this will help him win in November. The average American doesn't care. This is for the rabid base of the morally superior among us. I owe no money to any bank. Well, the banks usually find out if someone's trying to deceive them. In 22 your, years, I have no money loyalty, that's ever been owed Mr. Cohen, to any individual Mr. Chairman, or any bank. Mr. Cohen, did your so-called blind loyalty to the president cause you to defraud the bank for your own personal gain? Sir, I take exception to that because there has never been a fraud on a, a... I never defrauded any bank. Well, let's dig a little deeper on that, on the bank fraud. According to the Southern District of New York, you failed to disclose more than $20 million in liabilities, as well as tens of thousands of dollars of monthly expenses. That's according to the Southern District of New York. Now, Mr. Cohen, you being a lawyer, surely you knew you were breaking the law. No, no, why would you have done that? Sir, I'm not a CPA, and um, I pled guilty. I'm going to prison as a because result of it. Because you're a con? Uh, no, sir. Because I pled guilty, and I am going to be doing the time, I have caused tremendous, tremendous pain to my family, and I take well, let's, no Let's go back to the one the last statement. question about the bank. When the bank found out about the liabilities that you failed to disclose, you lied again to the bank, this is according to the Southern District of New York, and said it had been expunged when, in fact, you just shifted the debt to another bank. So apparently according to the information that that we received, your intent to defraud the bank was for the desire to purchase the summer home for eight and a half million dollars? No, sir. That would have been off of an equity line, considering I had less than a 50% loan to value on the assets, and there was a pre-existing line of credit that existed years before the date that you're referring to, where This is all surrounding New York City taxi medallions. But you understand that when you fail to disclose liabilities, especially uh, $20 million in liabilities, that is, in fact, fraud. Except even with the $20 million in liability. How much was it? The medallions were at that time worth over $45 million. Mr. Mr. Cohen, you called Donald Trump a cheat in your opening testimony. Uh, what would you call yourself? A fool. You- 
So here's a man who committed financial crimes, millions upon millions in terms of tax violations and crimes, apparently defrauded banks. That's not what Trump was convicted of. <laughs> Trump literally had no issues with any banks. A bureaucrat, or I should say, New York prosecutors believed that Trump committed a financial crime. So they convicted him. The court convicted him. Here you have a person who lied, com com committed financial crimes and tax crimes. Millions and millions of dollars. Then lied potentially perjury regarding wanting to work with Trump in the Oval Office. Or, yeah, in the Oval Office in his administration. I mean, you, this is you're, this is the key witness. In addition to Stormy, and Stormy might testify, which would be fantastic. You calling? Okay. Well, no comment on that. I, I appreciate, Mr. It. Chairman. We said we were in search of the truth. I, I don't believe that Michael Cohen is capable of telling the truth. And I would hope that as this committee moves forward, that when we have the opportunity to subpoena witnesses, we subpoena witnesses that are not. Uh, recently disbarred, are not convicted felon, and witnesses that haven't committed bank fraud and tax fraud. That is how we're going to determine the truth. So, Mr. Chairman, I yield the balance. And how many and times willing to pay? How many times did you meet with them? For one point two million dollars, how many times did you meet with them? I provided them with both in person as well as telephone access whenever they need it. How many times? Yes, sir. That's a question, I, Mr. I Cohen. I don't recall, sir. So did you ever talk yeah, to them? I spoke to them on several occasions, yes. How many? Uh, six times. Six times. Wow. $200,000 a call. Sir, I also would like to, right, I also would like I, to bring to your attention the contract. This is my five minutes, Mr. Cohen, not yours. Did you get money from the Bank of Kazakhstan? It's not a Bank of Kazakhstan. It's called BTA. BTA Bank, Kazakhstan BTA Bank. Did you get money from them? I did. For what purpose? The purpose was because the former CEO of that bank um, had absconded with over, it was between four to six billion dollars, and some of that money was here in the United States, and they sought my assistance in terms of finding, locating that money, and helping them to recollect it. So are you saying that all the reports that you were paid in some estimates, over $4 million, to have access and understanding of the Trump administration. You're saying that all of that was just paid to you just because you're a nice guy. Well, I am a nice guy, but more importantly, oh, yeah, each I and would every, beg to differ. The, the record contract, reflects that you're not a nice sir, guy. Each and every contract contained the clause in my contracts that said, I will not lobby and I do not do government relations work. In fact, in fact, Novartis sent me their contract, which stated specifically that they wanted me to lobby, that they wanted me to provide access to government, including the president. That information, that paragraph was crossed out by me, initialed, and written in my own handwriting. It says, I will not lobby or do government relations work. So Novartis representatives say that it was like they were hiring a non-registered lobbyist. So you disagree with that? I don't know what they said, sir, but the contract Have you ever itself. contacted anybody in the administration? Yes. To, to advocate on behalf of, of any aspect of any of your contracts? I ask unanimous consent, Mr. Chairman. I ask, I ask unanimous consent. The, gentleman, the gentleman's time has expired. You may answer the question. So, they he so like like a bunch of D.C. or Washington or political lawyers. He might have had to register. Um, to do the registration. Uh, pertaining to working for other countries. Anyway, the point is they're trying to imprison Trump based on the testimony of this man. It's not going to work. It just ain't going to work. Um, th now, that's just from the testimony that you saw. Now, this is this is Michael Cohen when he loved Trump. Check it out. Michael, do, what do you expect from President Obama when he leaves office? I expect look, more look, of the same. Look. 
Sean, here's, here's the thing. It doesn't really matter anymore. In two days, Donald Trump will become the 45th president. He's going to do everything that he promised during the campaign that he would do for the American people. He's already shown what he's going to do by keeping jobs in America, putting America first, and making America great again. He's just going to live up to his promises, which is really unlike, unfortunately, where we've been for the past eight years. Said that the only thing that will ultimately be remembered uh, under the Obama legacy is, I think, that bronze sculpture that was just commissioned. Yeah, I, I think that and bringing back Winston, the bust of Winston Churchill, which I hear is coming back as well. Michael, a lot of people have asked me, because they know we've been friends a long time, why isn't Michael going with the president-elect? Um, <sighs> have you decided to take on you any know, role? You know, so I get that, look, I get that question a lot. Um, I'm obviously very loyal and very dedicated. To what are the chances this man didn't want to be part of Trump's administration? You can't say that he was embarrassed or thought that Trump was a bad person. He's defending Trump now. He defended Trump on CNN. He worked for Trump for 10 years. Now, what happened was he committed crimes, millions of dollars worth of criminal behavior, then he cut a deal. Part of the deal was selling his soul to the Democratic Party, which he did. It's interesting because the, the average morally superior liberal Democrat doesn't see this. They just see somebody who has redeemed himself. It's almost like there's this religious component to despising Trump. There's like this theological component to disliking Trump. By the way, Cali Boy, thank you. Thank you very much. And it's like, the, people don't understand what's going on in American politics. There are, two, there are two types of voters in America today. One is the type of voter that says, what is going on with the economy? What's going on with foreign policy? This is terrible. Biden is not as good as Trump. There is then there's the other person. Oh my God, Trump! Oh, I don't care. I'll vote for anyone. I'll vote for the devil. Oh my God. So, if you're part of a cult, you won't do what's good for the country, and you'll just go up again. You'll just oppose Trump because he's mean, and media doesn't like him. The only reason people oppose Trump at this point in 2024, when the entire world is collapsing, is because they're likely part of what could be considered a cult. The Democratic Party has, there's a zero reason right now, really zero reason if you care about foreign policy and economic policy to vote for, for Democrats. The only reason is because the hush money payment and the hush money trial and Trump will be possibly convicted and, uh, oh, he's, he might be, uh, go to prison and he's not going to go to prison even one second or jail even one second, one nanosecond. But you but if you vote if you don't vote for Trump you're not you don't really care about the economy or foreign policy because objectively by every measure foreign policy and economic policy were better in 2019 and 2018 Hit subscribe if you're new to this channel. Let's continue. To Mr. Trump, I think he's going to be not just a good president. I think he's going to be a great president. He's going to be the president that ends up working with everybody, um, whether Republican or Democrat, including those Democrats that are choosing not to come. And the truth is he doesn't care. As far as me, um, I spoke yesterday to Mr. Trump. You, I mean, you'll be the first one to know, Sean, you and, of course, all your viewers. Uh, I'm going to be the personal attorney to Mr. Trump. Uh, I'm not going to be in government, but I'm going to remain technically in the same role um, for Mr. Trump, for President Trump, as I was when he was president of the Trump organization. So can I assume that in that role, not being a government role, that you'd have attorney-client privilege with President yes, Trump. Of, yes, of course, and that relationship um, hopefully will last, you know, for not four years, but eight years. Um, I think yeah. he's a wonderful man. I think he's going to be an amazing president. Uh, the family is just, you know, fantastic. They're behind. I think he's a wonderful man. I think he's going to be amazing, an amazing president. One year later, two years later. He's a bad person. I should never have been with him. Oh, my God. I was entered darkness, and uh, I was a fool. 
What are the chances that he's lying? What are the chances that he's doing this because he was told to say these things? He was told to say these things. Uh, That's why recently a judge said he may have committed perjury. Now, I don't think that, look, it's New York, so they might very well convict him. They might very well convict him in New York. But like, he might very well convict him, but I just don't see this hurting Trump in any way, shape, or form. I see it actually helping Trump. So the hush money, look, if you hear anything about Donald Trump that doesn't have to do with his economy was worse and his foreign policy was worse than Biden's, then he's it's only benefiting Trump. So if they convict him and, uh, for hush money, it's going to be overturned on appeal. Just like when the Colorado Supreme Court banned him and it was overturned by a unanimous Supreme Court decision. Okay. The only thing people should be worrying about in 24 is economic policy and foreign policy. What is the best thing for this country? If you live in in the United States of America, you're an American citizen, and you're voting in 24, you are going to have to deal with the economy and foreign policy. That's it. That's the only two reasons to vote for a president, not his personality, not if Jimmy Kimmel or or Robert De Niro like him or Bill Maher, foreign policy and economic policy, objectively, without a shadow of a doubt, was better under, under Trump than Biden. That's it. I mean, there's really no rebuttal to that. So what's taking place is you have a person who very likely committed perjury, who one second loved Trump, worked with him for 10 years, now dislikes Trump. And then it was, I mean... It was a situation where they say, well, Trump is uh, not a good human being. Well, he didn't destroy a country like President Obama with Libya or or Biden with Libya. He didn't send Americans to never end counterinsurgency conflicts like like Kerry and 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 Biden and and Clinton and Bush. So, what's the worst thing Trump did as president? What's the worst thing that President Obama did? Okay, the worst thing that that Bush, Obama, and Biden have done is infinitely worse. The worst things are infinitely worse than anything Trump has done. They say, well, Trump didn't take you know what seriously. Yes, he did. And even if Trump said exactly what a certain bureaucrat who talks like this, let's say Trump said do this, Democrats would say we're going to do the opposite. So what does it matter? And they say, oh, he didn't take uh, his last year seriously. He did, but what do they want him to do? More people lost their lives. More people lost their lives with Biden's in Biden's first year. Like literally everything is worse. Everything is worse with Democrats in charge. And yet because they don't like Trump's personality, that's okay. And, you know, all I can say is the following. I don't usually like, I, I, I'd like to talk about foreign policy, but you know what? It's like, it's always dicey on this platform, specific issues. What's taking place in the world today would not take place with Trump in office. What's taking place in the world today would not take place with Trump in office. It's taking place. All of this chaos is taking place because Biden's administration is completely inept and lacks any foreign policy vision. Democrats govern through public relations, polls, and media. Media is an extension of the Democratic Party. It's basically 24-7 free political advertising. Okay, there's supposed to be a cap on uh, FEC uh, contributions in terms of media. Okay, but they get free advertising. Anyway, God bless you all. To my super chat, to the members on this channel, thank you. Nicholas, thank you. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow, everybody. This is the Hush Money uh, starting Monday. It'll be overturned on appeal if he gets convicted. But hit subscribe. He's going to be president. And Michael Cohen.